Hi friends, one of my viewers told me about a great deal on chicken that allows her to feed her family of four for almost a week for between six and eight dollars worth of chicken. That sounds too good to be true, so I'm putting this to the test. I'm headed to Walmart to buy that chicken and I'll pick up a few other ingredients. If my viewer is right, I should be able to feed a family of four dinners for a week with only $20. That equals out to be $2.85 per meal. So if I'm able to include chicken with most meals, then that's a really great deal. For my food choices, I'm just going to stick with the basics. I'm going to pick up a five pound bag of potatoes at just under $4 and maybe some rice and vegetables. I had another viewer tell me about what a great bargain the frozen chicken at Walmart is and so I immediately headed to the frozen chicken section. I was looking for the chicken leg quarters but I couldn't find it anywhere so once again I had to pull out my phone, get on the Walmart website and find where they were located. As it turns out they weren't in the frozen section at all, they were in the fresh meat area and there were only four bags left. I decided to go back and get the 10 pound bag of potatoes. It'll take up more of my budget, but it practically ensures that my family will not go hungry this week and they should be able to use some of these for other meals like breakfast or lunches. Here is what I was able to get with the $20. I have a one pound bag of long grain rice. Instead of purchasing the rice from Walmart like you would do, I took some rice out of my stash because I do purchase it in 20 pound bags at a time, but I'm factoring in the cost of this Walmart rice, which comes in at 88 cents for a one pound bag. I'm doing the same thing with the flour since I already have almost a full bag at home. Because I'll be using quite a bit, this week I'm factoring that into the budget. This would be the flour that you would purchase from Walmart. It comes in a two pound bag for $1.16. I'm planning something somewhat risky this week. I want to use the flour to make biscuits. I've made those before by subbing out water for buttermilk, but this time I'll be subbing out oil for butter also. And I think I might be pressing my luck with this, but if it works, I would be able to make a ton of biscuits with this flour to go along with those potatoes that will be left over that would help my family immensely during the week. And when I say my family, I'm talking about my viewers that are watching that are using these videos to help get by. If it's a fail, then you'll see me fail and you can choose to get the biscuits from Walmart instead. If you don't have oil or any other ingredient needed to make the biscuits, you can purchase this can of great value biscuits that are 10 for 94 cents and use those instead. However, you won't have as many biscuits as if I make them with the flour. I'll also use this flour to make gravy with, but you could use it to make tortillas, empanadas, etc. I might do a pot pie with these ingredients. I'm not quite sure yet. Here is the price breakdown for you, but I'll also put this in the description area of my video. You can simply copy and paste from there. Ideally, my viewers will customize this to meet the needs of their own family. This is an extreme emergency family budget and doesn't contain all of the fruits and vegetables that you would expect in a regular budget. This week, I'll be using minimal spices from my pantry. Okay, friends, let's get to cooking. When separating the leg from the thigh, it helps if you cut along the fat line. Then your knife will go right between the bones. If you cut into the chicken and it feels like bone, then you're not cutting in the right spot. I was looking forward to seeing 
how many pieces of chicken were here. I was hoping for 28 so that if my family wanted to, they could each have one piece of chicken every night of the week. And I was pleasantly surprised that I ended up with 32 pieces. That is a really great deal for $6.72. Sure, it took a little work to clean and prep, but it didn't take that long to do. Since this chicken is sold fresh, you'll need to freeze some of it. I checked the freshness dating on mine when I purchased it, and I still had four days left on the good through date. One of the easiest ways to cook this is just to bake it in the oven, so that's what I'm going to do. I'll season them under the skin with a little onion powder, garlic salt, and pepper. I'm cooking eight pieces at once, and for the last four, I'll be coating the skin with a layer of Spanish paprika. That'll give them a nice, rich color, and then afterwards, I'm spraying them with some oil, which will help to make them crispy, but it's also going to ensure that they don't stick to my pan. I'm wondering how many potatoes you guys thought were in a 10 pound bag. Obviously, this amount can vary, but honestly, I had no idea. So when I counted these, I was happy to discover that I have 28 potatoes and each one is fairly good size. So this means that every person in the family of four could have a potato every night of the week if they wanted to. And since potatoes are filling, I'm feeling pretty good about this purchase. For one of my dinners, I'll be making mashed potatoes. I'm just thin slicing them and boiling them in heavily salted water. Okay friends, it's time to see if my idea for the biscuits is gonna work. I'll put the link to the original recipe for you in the description area of my video. I'm doubling this recipe because I wanna get enough biscuits for at least four meals. Sometimes it's a really bad idea to double recipes because it doesn't turn out quite the same as the original, but I guess we will see. And just to remind you, I'm subbing out water for buttermilk and oil for butter. And I did want to say that I do like this roller that I got from Temu. The dough didn't stick to it like it was sticking to my wooden roller, so I'm definitely happy with this.
Some of these were a little lopsided, so I would just take my hand and smash them down to even them out. I ended up with seven nice looking biscuits and one ugly one, but that's okay. I decided to add paprika to the remaining chicken because the color was just so vibrant and beautiful. I'm making a gravy for these mashed potatoes, so I'm just adding pepper to these. They're already salted due to the salted water. Here are my biscuits. They didn't brown very well, and I probably could have left them in a little bit longer to get some better color. However, I do plan to serve these open face with gravy on top, so these are fine as long as they taste good. Normally, when you make biscuits, you can use an egg wash on the top, and that helps them to get a nice golden color. But we don't have eggs in the budget, so I'm just using what we have. And here I'm making a roux for my gravy. You've probably seen me do this before if you watch my channel. I'm not real particular. If I'm going to make a lot of gravy, then you're going to want more tablespoons of flour. You just start with a little oil and then add in your flour and then let that cook for a good long while. I want my gravy to have a nice dark color, so I'm really going to brown this as much as possible. In fact, I'm going to brown it so long that I almost am worrying that it's going to burn. And then that's when I'm going to go ahead and add in my water. I'll be using chicken broth to season this. Sometimes in order to get that nice rich dark color, people will add half chicken bouillon and half beef bouillon because beef bouillon gives it a nice dark color. However, if you brown your flour long enough, it'll still give you the, the color that you want. And that's what I'm going for here. My biscuits actually don't look too bad, but we'll see how they taste. Of course, anything's going to taste good with this brown gravy. A good gravy will cover a lot of bad food. So if you ever have a dry casserole or anything like that, a tasteless meatloaf, just make a good gravy and pour that over the top. And yes, these are actually so much better than I expected. These are good. They're not a flaky biscuit, but they never were even... I think originally, I think somebody that tried this recipe had said it was like KFC biscuits. I had to agree when I first tried this recipe, and I'll link the original recipe. They're really tasty. I mean, I think that they would be better with butter if you have butter, but this definitely works. And I did for this first meal, I just wanted to plate everything out for four people to show you. Basically, this is what you could have every night of the week if you wanted to. We'll be running a little bit shy on the second vegetable um, because of course potatoes are a vegetable. But this is quite a bit of food for four people and eating like this there would be four pieces of chicken left over at the end of the week. And for this meal I had this amount of mashed potatoes and gravy left over. I had half of the biscuit dough remaining that I didn't feel like rolling out so I just put some saran wrap over it and put it in the fridge for now. This will be great for another meal. Let me just give you some advance warning that this scallop potatoes that I made was one of my favorite dishes this week. It was excellent. I just realized while editing this video that I didn't talk about how the chicken turned out. It was a huge hit in my family. My son loved it and said that the spices were perfect.
I didn't eat it because I don't eat chicken or meat very much, but my son took it to work every day for his lunch. When it first comes out of the oven, it's nice and crispy, and there's really nothing easier than baked chicken. For this dish, I'm just layering thin slices of potatoes and adding onion powder, garlic salt, and pepper to each layer. Then I made another roux, and this time I was careful not to let my flour brown because I wanted it to have a nice light color. Usually when you're making scalloped potatoes, you would add a little bit of milk or half and half or heavy cream into the sauce. I added a small amount of vegetable bouillon to my sauce, but chicken or not chicken bouillon would work as well. If you want to make potatoes au gratin, or as the French say, au gratin, then you would just remove the roux from the heat, then stir in some cheese. A nice melting cheese like Gruyere, along with a sharp cheddar, would be delicious. If you're one of my viewers that can't use either onion powder or garlic, then you could use paprika here, along with some dried parsley. Once I knew that my potatoes were almost tender, I removed the foil so that I could brown the top. This is what they looked like when they were done, and they weren't quite brown enough for me, so I stuck them under the broiler for just a minute. I wanted to get that nice, crispy, and chewy texture, and this was perfect. These were a 9.5. The next day, I added some Tillamook Extra Sharp Cheddar and heated them up in the microwave, and that put them to a 10. I sent some with my son for lunch and he said he enjoyed them and was asking for more the next night. This would be what one of the dinners looks like and I didn't make gravy for the biscuits but obviously you could if you wanted to. It only takes a few minutes. Since we have a 10 pound bag of potatoes, I thought it would be fun to make several different potato dishes because nobody wants to eat the same thing every night. Nothing is easier than Hasselback potatoes. My family liked this chicken so much that I made a couple of batches using the same seasoning method from earlier. I've made some other delicious chicken recipes on my channel. I've made hot wings and these drumsticks with a garlic orange glaze. I've also made a crock pot honey garlic chicken that turned out really well served over rice. I'll put links for all of those recipes for you in the description area of my video. I thought that with all this chicken, we should make at least one crock pot recipe. I'll be removing the skin. My viewer said she uses the skin to make chicken chicharrones, or as some people call it, chicarones. I thought it would be fun to make those, but I just didn't have time in this video, but that would make a great snack for my low carb and keto viewers. A recent conversation with one of my viewers inspired me to pick up this minced onion, and I've been thinking about recipes to make with it ever since. Today's crock pot meal is perfect. I'll make a homemade Lipton onion soup to make a sauce with.
I'm going to go ahead and make the full pound of rice and this time I'll add a little turmeric. It won't add anything to the flavor, it'll just make it a beautiful color. Also adding a little dried parsley to make it more appealing. I was trying to figure out how to get our mixed veggies to last us through a couple of meals so I thought the best way would be to add it into the rice. I love this rich, vibrant color. It looks so appetizing, even though it tastes just like regular rice. I could have added a lot more veggies into this. The broth was rich and flavorful, and I had a request for this again the next day. So overall, I would say this meal was super easy and very successful. I made the biscuits from the dough that I had sitting in the fridge for two days. I wasn't sure how they were going to turn out, but they were actually really good. I would have liked it if the biscuits would have browned a little bit better on the top. I even tried using my kitchen torch on them, but I never seemed to like the kind of brown I get. I don't know, maybe I'm using it wrong. If any of you have any tips, let me know. So far, that hasn't been a good purchase for me. But I will say that this recipe was delicious and the biscuits tasted great. This is definitely a comfort food that can be made for very little money. Obviously, if you wanted to roll out the biscuits and do a regular chicken pot pie, you could do that. I've done that before on my channel. I think I did that in the eating for $5 a week video. But anyway, this was a good recipe and it warms up great the next day in the microwave. I would love to make this next time without the chicken and just as a vegetarian dish. I just realized that these biscuits are vegan. So I'm hoping that some of my vegan viewers will want to make this dish. I am so grateful to my viewer that told me about this chicken because I really feel like it's a game changer when it comes to feeding families on a budget. I'm shocked that we were able to feed a family of four dinners for a week for only $6 worth of chicken and $20 worth of food. Please keep your comments and tips coming. I read every single one of them and I love being able to share this information with my viewers. I hope you like my video. Thank you so much for watching friends and I'll see you next week.